Hey everybody, welcome back to Bob Key TV. Well, the biological passport in the headlines again recently because of the curious case of Sergio Enao of Team Sky, a native of Colombia. Uh, first of all, off the top, let me just get this straight. Professional cycling is the most comprehensively tested professional sport on earth. Not only is there out of competition tests, uh, tests on a regular basis in the races. There is also the biological passport whereby a panel of experts examine historical blood parameters for the riders that are brought into their attention. Uh, Team Sky brought Sergio Enao to their attention and uh, actually commissioned a scientific study to determine whether or not abnormalities in the blood value could be based on where an athlete grew up, especially at high altitude. Now, Sergio Enal travels between Colombia over 6,000 feet, his hometown, um, and sea level, which uh, generally the races in Western Europe transpire at sea level. And, and apparently, <laughs> although, let me say this also, it's a very, very dynamic, at times confusing, and, and the biological passport, passport, it's like the catcher in the rye in the anti-doping movement. It's like beyond the beyond, before the sport falls off a cliff, we have the biological passport to just reiterate how serious the sport of cycling is in the anti-doping movement. That being said, it's been a very confusing run. Uh, Roman Kreuziger uh, exonerated, Franco Pellizzotti did a suspension, and it's very hard to determine because the science is, let's say, less than exact and less than understandable. If you have a banned substance in your system, there's only one way it could have gotten there if you ingested it whether that was your fault, whether you ingested something that was contaminated or purposefully ingested a banned substance, that's a whole nother story. Uh, but the biopassport, very dynamic, very complicated. Uh, it's a great tool when used right, but I mean, what's simple for me, especially <laughs> if somebody has something in their system how did it get there? What are the penalties? Simple. Biopassport and the teams involved, the riders involved. Um, if, if it's determined that Sergio Enal uh, was not manipulating his blood, was not a foul of the biological passport, it's a real shame because he was unable to raise flesh alone and is at this point indefinitely suspended from racing until this issue is resolved. And they're just having a hard time, it seems to me, determining whether or not growing up at altitude and traveling to races at sea level back and forth a few times during the year um, has changed his numbers so much that it's, it's, a, it's could be a violation or it's just normal that when you go to altitude, you're red blood cells change their changes their character um, there are a couple of other athletes on the sky team that also grew up at altitude uh, I believe Nairobi uh, Kenya where Chris Room grew up is around 6,000 feet and maybe maybe more more shelling is Sergio's own brother Sebastian now so the UCI and the biological passport could probably go a long way in understanding uh, the biological passport and athletes that grow up at altitude by doing some more study. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's shameful that Sergio Enal does not get to race, uh, especially if it's found that uh, he did not run afoul of the bio passport. He's coming back from a really devastating injury from last year's Tour of Switzerland and was, has been on great form this spring. Uh, so. Uh, hopefully we can get some clarity in the weeks and months to come, but the biopassport, one of the strongest tools of any sport 
to combat doping. All right, everybody, comments. Let me hear what you think. <laughs> Subscriptions and thumbs up and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks a lot. He broke his nose. He had contused cuts and scrapes and bruising to his face, but most worrying, he has a fracture in the base of his skull because of that, and that will require uh, further